Well, I will. Well, I hope you do. Uh, yeah. Oh, there are people have just joined us here well, right in the middle of our conversation. We've asked you time and again to knock, knock before first, you come please. in here. It's so right. embarrassing. It really is. Thank heavens I didn't have anything hanging in the kitchen of an untoward nature. Right. I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> just, oh, you're so bad. I know. Well, what are we doing today? I don't know. Only the witch could tell us right. that. If well, she just fly, oh, there she the witch, is. and there She's she is. here right on cue. Here, you read it. All righty. And witchy woman says... Witchy woman. Dear guys, what's a kugel? Kugel, kugel. My daughter, Missy, has to do one in home ec, and we've never heard of it. Missy never pays attention and is, therefore, ignorant. As that well-known hot place, she's 16, so I'm sure you understand. She's as ignorant as mm -hmm. that hot place. I sort of messed that up a little. Answer, here it is. A kugel is a Jewish word. Kugel is German for ball or cannonball. Here it refers to a type of pudding. One version is made from grated raw potatoes, which are mixed with egg yolks, grated onions, baking powder, salt, and pepper. Whipped egg whites are folded into the potato mixture, which, topped with breadcrumbs, is baked in the oven. Another version is made of noodles and vegetables, and and they cause you to sneeze a lot. Oh. And both are usually served with boiled or roasted meat. Well, we've just learned a great deal. Yes, and I'm, I'm so glad the witch took the time to look this up in the food dictionary. Because it turns out we're all three doing kugels Yes. Today. I'm going to do one called another kugel. kugel. <laughs> Perhaps you should have done yours first. Sent in by El Serata of Willingboro, New Jersey. Never heard of that. And I'm doing, um, where are my glasses? We're what doing searching for glasses. Well, anyway, uh, I'm doing uh, a cottage cheese cornflake kugel, yes. and it was sent in by Adele Goldfield of King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. And the very lovely Miss Doris will be by later on. She's just, just came in on her bike. Or was it the broom? <laughs> Sent in by Harriet S. Gruber of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's Passover Kugel. Oh. All three of them look beautiful because I was checking it all out before we got on the mm -hmm. air. They do. Hit it. All right. Two eggs go into a bowl instead of down the back of Larry's neck. And uh, we're going to beat them up with... Another ingredient here in a minute after we beat the eggs up. But you have to beat the eggs up first. And I'll do that with my whisk. And then this is the cottage cheese kugel. So this is the place the cottage cheese goes. So we're going to take a 16 ounce container of large curd cottage cheese. And if you just hold your mouth right, it'll come right out in one fabulous big wad. wad and then you mix the cottage cheese and the eggs together and that's all I have to do right now and it takes a little while so Mr. Bly hit it. Well the first thing I have to do is start some boiling water and I got that stuff boiling right over there and then you 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 take these real fine noodles those are very fine noodles little tiny ones like that and that's exactly what they're called old-fashioned egg noodles Fine. It has the word written right on the bottom of the package. Fine. It could says. you use uh, what there angel is. hair spaghetti? Uh, I imagine you could use about anything you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Anyway, take that and throw it in there in accordance with the package instructions. And that's a whole bag of it, which is about uh, hmm, eight ounces. And put that in there, and you do it according to the package instructions, which is four to five minutes. And uh, because these are so fine, you know, probably four minutes will They're do the greatest so fine. And not only that, but you're going to be baking them anyway, so even if they weren't done, you know, chances are you could even start out, well, no, you can't because yeah. you got to mix it with other stuff. I was going to say, you know, some recipes today that just say throw the raw stuff in there, but this is not one of those instances. So I'm going to boil that for five, four or five minutes. And then mine sort of starts out the same way that Mr. Johnson starts out. We have to start out by taking three eggs and whooping up on them real good, real good, three of them. And because you're going to be mixing this in with something else, it's a good idea to mix it separately, and that way you'll make sure that you've got them all done up just like they're supposed to be. And go ahead, Johnson. All right. Now, 
after you've mixed your egg yolks and your other stuff up, and here it is in this bowl right here, real pretty pale yellow, you just let it alone for a little while, and you take yourself a Pyrex or dish or a, one of the other oven-proof dishes like this. It can be a square one. I did mine in an 8-inch square one that you'll see in a little while and melt a couple of tablespoons of margarine in the bottom of it, and then cover the bottom with corn flakes. Yes, you heard me, corn flakes. What'd you say? Corn flakes. They're wonderful. <laughs> I love them with no sugar on them. I and, just think they're wonderful. Well, too bad. This has got sugar oh. and cinnamon. <laughs> I yeah. used about a half a cup of sugar or a third of a cup of sugar and two tablespoons of cinnamon. So you got a cinnamon sugar, you know, I think that, and you uh, want to sprinkle that all over your cornflakes. Cornflakes are such a utilitarian type of uh, meal. Mm-hmm. They are. They're just a, and they're also useful for a lot of different purposes. Mm-hmm. You can do all kinds of things with them. Now, this is so quick that I, I think I will. Should I go on and, and do some more? Uh, this is no. Uh, let's. Uh, Let's keep it a big secret what all you're right. going to do now. Anyway, I've taken three eggs and beat them all up, and now we're going to go to a bigger bowl. Ladies and gentlemen, a bigger bowl, and you're going to put a that in bowl. there. And then the next thing you're going to do is take your noodles off. Do you think it's been three to four minutes? No. It just seems like it has, well, but it really it hasn't really been. It seems like it's been in there for 20 or 30 minutes at two, this point. Doris said. Has it only been two? My timekeeper. Okay, well then we'll go on ahead and pre-mix some of this other stuff. Two cups of milk go into this. There you go. And put that in with your egg mixture. And then you just kind of diddle around for a while. And then uh, half a cup of sugar goes in there. This seems to me like it has an awful lot of sugar in it. But yep. that's what it calls for. These half are a cup definitely of sugar. sugary recipes. They really are. Half a cup of sugar goes in there. And a teaspoon of vanilla goes in there. A teaspoon of vanilla. I don't have one here, so I'll just uh, estimate. There we go. A teaspoon of vanilla. I think that was a little more than, but that's okay. And sort of mix that around. Make sure you get your sugar distributed pretty well. And then we'll come back and put some of the other stuff in it All directly. Right. Okay. Now, with I'm got my cornflakes and cinnamon <laughs> sugar on them, and now I'm going to put in the contents of this bowl, which is the cottage cheese and the eggs. Come on out of there, you bad boys! All right, and now make sure you get it all out of there. Well, we're very carefully going to spread out the cottage cheese and the eggs. Do you like cottage cheese? Yes, I do. Good. I'm glad to hear that because you're so persnickety about some things like beans and stuff. I didn't know whether anything that was lumpy no. like cottage oh, no. cheese would bother my, you or my not. My distaste of beans comes from the consistency, the mushy kind of stuff. But cottage cheese, especially the large curd, is firm. Hello? Oh, there's the phone. Oh. Well, it's time to take the noodles off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take her back here in the sink and drain them right now in a big colander that I have. Put those back there like so. And we'll just wait for them to drain thoroughly. Go ahead, Mr. John. All right, well, now we're going to put on another layer of, that's right, cone flakes. Ooh, that looks good. Well, it better be. Up. That's good. And I'll get rid of the cornflakes. It's a large, oh, it fell over on my glasses. Now we'll smooth out the cornflakes and give it another go with the cinnamon sugar. What are you doing now? I'm putting cinnamon sugar on them. Any fool can tell what I'm doing if they're watching, so I'm not going to well, we have to discuss it like a, a ball. Well, I agree, but a, you know, when you just stand around tournament. and you don't say anything, what happens is the compression system uh, on the audio oh, chain give me a break, goes way we'll out see. of whack, and then next time you speak, it just knocks the thing off the air. <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> it's a very technical thing. Uh huh. Anyway, well, anyway, is that it? Well, it, not quite. I oh, have one more layer. Thank heavens. Go. We'll save that for uh, a couple of minutes yes. from now. Larry, it's all yours. Thank you. Well, now, what I have done here is I have taken the noodles and have thoroughly 
upside your head. <laughs> my noodles. See these little bitty ones. And I have just thoroughly drained them. And take them and put them in there and mix them around real, real good. And then you've got to put some cottage cheese in this one also. Eight ounces of creamed cottage cheese. That's a little bit more than eight ounces, so I'm just going to use about half of that. And mix that all around. Now, simultaneous to all of this, concurrently with everything else that you're doing in the kitchen, you should be taking a large bowl. This thing is hot. I had it in the oven. Whatever you're going to bake this in, your casserole dish or whatever, uh, if, if it's a metal one, just set it on top of the stove and turn the eye on real low and put just a little bit of margarine in it and melt it. Otherwise, today I just took this glass one and put it into the, uh, put it into the, the thing, the, the oven, oven, I think they call it, and I turned it on and I melted the margarine across the bottom, just a little bit, just a Or you could put it tablespoon. like I did in the microwave. You could put it in the microwave. Same There's thing. many ways you can go about doing this, all of which are terribly uh, wonderful and mysterious. Now, here's what you do. Now, make sure that you get all this, you don't, you don't want this to happen. You don't want a big wad of this no, stuff no. Uh, to come up like that. So make sure you smush it around pretty good so that you have mixed it and perfectly. Now, what you do at this point is take it and put it in the dish that you're going to bake it in, like so. And in a couple of minutes, we'll come back because there's a very special something that goes on top of it, the special thing. Well, Johnson. I'm going to do my special thing over here on the top of it. Uh, just little dots of margarine. I'm, I'm using about three tablespoons of margarine, and I am dotting over here. Easier said than done, chemo sabe. Oh, all right. Oh, well, get on over there. Don't. This. Uh-huh. Now, we have the, the lovely Doris Ford is coming in. Uh, later on, and she talks so slow that she will take up much of this time. Did now, I are, say, are you dotting the I, butter, or are you actually I, semicolling? No, this is put on with as a dot. Oh, okay. Uh, let me just. Just everyone is formed perfectly. Well, do we have the cook sisters? Well, we got lots here? of things, but I'm oh, just. Good. I'm just enjoying watching you fill well, time. Well, I'm so glad. Throw that away. Uh, so, like well, that's just wonderful. And now you bake it for uh, 25 minutes to a half an hour at 350 degrees. Let me go over the recipe with you. Oh, please. You use 16 ounces of large curd cottage cheese, two eggs lightly beaten, sugar to taste, cinnamon to taste, and cornflakes to spread. Simple, easy, nothing to it. Even your goofy little son could do it at home. So just go ahead. Kitties, you can do this yourself. It's easy to do, and it tastes real good. Okay, now the next thing that goes on mine is um, we have uh, some graham crackers, and it doesn't take quite a whole pack of these, a whole block of these. I've discovered that's really just a little too much. About a half a pack of these will do, and then that means that you get to use up the rest of the milk <laughs> by eating the remainder of them. I'll take those home or I'll probably just share them with the staff. But anyway, now what we gotta do is, is smush them up real good. And I have brought along a little rolling pin and just make sure you mash it up real good. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and it's gonna become the topping. You're just gonna take it and sprinkle it across the top before you put it in the oven at 350 degrees for 45 minutes. Almost there, not quite. Bear with me for just a minute. So anyway, that's what you do. I wish I had one of those things like you have, John, some one of those flat things that you use in your kitchen, which is so nice oh, for yes. gathering yes. this stuff up. And just those put mats. those across. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. wonderful, just wonderful. No, I was thinking about that You've device got one, that you have, that device oh. that you have uh, with a, a sort of a flat side on it. That's real good for scraping mm -hmm. stuff up, a scraper type yes. thing. Put that in the oven, 350 degrees, 45 minutes. Here's what's in it. Three eggs, a half pound of fine noodles cooked, two cups of milk, a half cup of sugar, 
uh, eight ounces of creamed cottage cheese, a teaspoon of vanilla and graham cracker crumbs, and 350 degrees for about an hour. And it sets up just beautifully. It is a lovely, lovely thing. It really is. Well, let me show you. After baking for a half an hour, this is what the, the cottage cheese kugel, kugel looks like. Ooh, yeah. isn't that pretty? We could have shaped it a little more or done it in a round dish. Doesn't make any difference. It would be truer to its uh, origins in a round dish. So uh -huh. that it, and you could probably unmold it and cook it so that if you did it in a round bowl in the oven, it would come out like half a cannonball. Ooh, a half a cannonball. Half a cannonball. Hmm. Well, a man of your caliber. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, the Cook Sisters are coming by here oh, to good. dispense with a little uh, down home philosophy and, and mischief. Uh, some information that you just can't live without. I just know you can't because I said you can't. So, anyway, here they are right now. All right, now, you know, when you were baking the other day and you didn't have any self rising flour, I didn't want to make you mad at the time, <laughs> but the, the recipe for self rising flour is one cup of flour and one half teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of baking powder. And that's the recipe for self-rising flour. I'm Sister Cook. And I'm Tootsie Cook, and we're, we're the Cook, Cook Sisters. sisters. <laughs> oh, and when you take this out of the oven, oh, that is so oh, hot. wait a minute. Isn't that beautiful? That's a, that's a phony one. <laughs> no, no, actually, a faux that's, kugel that's that you have brought in here. A faux kugel. <laughs> Isn't it pretty though, with all yes, the cracker is. crumbs on the top of it? And mm -hmm. I used a little little metal thing so I could melt my, mm -hmm. my uh, margarine right in there and everything like that. So it's real pretty, and that's what it looks like when you've cooked it. I think that uh, it's time for a visit from Mama Doris. She's on her way. I can hear her clippity clopping down the street right now, even as we speak. Oh no, she had to take time to smack Harold upside the head. <laughs> <laughs> She never takes time to do that. It just comes no. natural. No, I don't smack Carol, but there's two other people I'd like to smack uh. once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How'd you like to wear this little thing on your nose? <laughs> well, that, thank you. <laughs> well, this certainly is pretty. Is this a desserty okay. type thing? Um, I, I would think it would be. It, uh, I had an awful time trying to find this. And I never did. I was supposed to find far. Find what the studio? And, uh, did you have problems finding no, the studio? No, I had trouble finding Laban. Oh. Okay. <laughs> he said I should have called him. I called a newspaper. I went to every store in the Roanoke Valley, drove for Doris. hundreds of miles Doris. trying to find. Farful. We're here. To I don't help even you. know what it is. You know that yeah. Well, did you know what it is? What is it? It's a cartoon character. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't it that. Puppet that was on TV with chocolate milk. That's right. Yeah. That was powerful. That's uh -huh. right. That's good. Okay. Well, well, would you explain well, what it we is? Couldn't don't quite just get mention it. Okay. If we had to do, um, I don't know. Uh, oh, you do so. I, I know. Told you, you what it was. But you tell me again. All right. Powerful <laughs> is a little egg noodle. Hmm. Oh boy, that that's was it. really tough. Well, that, what he said, I could, just could a have used. Egg noodle. What was it's the sort name? Of like of, orzo. Or, that you could use orzo, or whatever. But I called a newspaper, everyone, and they said you could use potatoes. If you wanted, um, or uh, use the matzo crackers because we could just couldn't find it in our area. But you're supposed to take four cups of it, but you can substitute, like I say, the uh, potatoes or uh, the uh, matzo crackers, and then you have four eggs, one teaspoon of salt, four tablespoons of margarine melted, a fourth a te tablespoon of cinnamon, a half a cup of sugar, four cups apples grated and two cups of prunes cut in pieces. Prunes. And, and if you Ooh. get it, <laughs> don't do like I did. I bought the little cheap prunes and it took me hours to cut them off of the thing. But, and then it didn't tell you how to put it together, really. So I sort of tried to make it like a pie. I put the, the, um, the matzahs on the bottom and then some on the top. And this, like, it, this is what it looks like when you get it out. And like Laban said, if this was in a bowl, I think it would have been molded. But that's mm. what it looks well, like. Well, it looks a little moldy right there. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Uh, so, you, well, I'm so glad our staff will have the benefit of eating of the the, all these prunes. Uh -huh. well, that, that is true. And how long do you bake it? Um, it did tell you that. But 9 by 13 pan, 350 degrees for 45 minutes. Well, let me ask you something else. 
When did you see that the Hindenburg was first in trouble? The <laughs> Hindenburg? <laughs> like well, I'm interviewing her. <laughs> well, I was alive then. <laughs> uh, well, let me ask you this. Do you remember anything about the Lindbergh baby? <laughs> well, I think I was alive then, too. <laughs> Keep going. You're doing fine. Well, that's enough <laughs> the of that. Civil War, I don't remember too much unless I was uh, I know. She is a little hazy on I that. Doris that is like that. Mae West used to say she'd been things and seen places. <laughs> it just occurred to me I look like I was interviewing you for a news uh -huh. story of some kind or the other. Well, well, we certainly have lots of beautiful, beautiful And you know these items. kugels can be used as side dishes to roast meat, but there are dessert kugels that are very uh, popular that can be used uh, the same at as a side dish, or some of them can even be used as dessert. Well, now, is the one that I did today considered a dessert kugel? No, because it's a it's side kugel. Well, but it's got sugar in it, and it's got it's graham right. crackers on eat, top of it. Well, you eat, for instance, apples with sugar in it, or corn pudding with sugar in it at meals. Oh, okay. So uh, it's what? the same kind of thing. Well, would you serve this maybe with some cream or something? Like Hang on a second. I, I would. Well, I guess you could. <laughs> <laughs> didn't know she was going to go on. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's okay. Well, that's I was right. getting ready to leave, but that's uh -huh. okay. But it... it <laughs> go ahead. I'm oh, she just, no, just giggle, 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 <laughs> giggle. Now, oh, that's fine. Okay, thank you very much. And and uh, when did you know that TWA was going bankrupt? <laughs> first? Yeah, never mind. It's, it's fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some of this out. It's going to be cold. Is that okay? I don't care. I guess I could heat it up. I believe we have time. <laughs> No, not with all that metal. Oh, you're right. Well, no, I, that's why I'm putting it in individual bowls. Oh. Oh, you're going to microwave the bowls. Yeah, well, I well, think I what will. What can you do? Cook time. Uh-huh. Now well, that isn't working. You know, we got some mail this week, Mr. Bly. Yeah. It said that we needed to take this pig off the wall that they People were tired of. People love the pig. People do. They love People the pig. People are crazy about the pig. Well, I'm heating up some stuff. Bring, Doris, bring that over when it, and it's set for, yeah, just bring it like it is. Oh, my. Well, well, I think this is beautiful. Now, is this the one you did? Yep. Oh, it's so floppy. With the corn flakes and all that stuff. Mmm. I love it. Mmm, mmm, mmm. And you could do this. It's real good. With, uh, Non-fat cottage cheese, the faux eggs, the, mm. you know, the artificial eggs. Not artificial, they're real, they just don't have the yolks in them. And uh, one of the uh, artificial sweeteners, you could actually do this. Doris's is real good, and I love the prunes. I think they're just fabulous. Well, here's mine, and it looks right rubbery. I don't mm. think we heated it up very much. But it is good. That's wonderful. It really is. Real pretty, too. Well, there you have it. Three different kinds. And each one does vary an awful lot mm -hmm. from the other one, which is surprising. Now, with Doris, with hers, I think it would be a great go-along with a pork roast or uh, some kind of pork product, tenderloin or something really lean mm -hmm. because of the prunes and things. I think that would go along really, really well. I think yours would be just marvelous, heated up with ice cream. Uh -huh. on top of it. <laughs> well, it, it is tastes great. real tasty. I think it'd be I great like with it. some raisins in it. I think of the three that my favorite one is yours. Well, thanks. I believe so. I think that I just like the this, uh, what is this glaze that's on top? This is the cinnamon and sugar. Mm. The little cinnamon sugar glaze is just fabulous. It's real crunchy. Well, I like it an awful lot. Mm. And the I next want time, some more next time we come on the show, Doris is going to tell us about the time she talked to Edward R. Murrow oh. prior to World War II. Uh huh. You know, she's on the scene with all that new mm -hmm. stuff with that microphone. That just tickles me. I don't know why. I was alive then. Standing there talking to <laughs> her in that her, microphone. She's she's saying, saying over saying I was alive then. She has seen all the great disasters. The only of our thing time. she missed was the Civil War, and that was only by a hair. No, well, I've, uh, yeah. I've been we got to get out of yeah. here. I thought it would never happen, but we actually do have to leave at this point. <laughs> Thank See you, you around. Thank Doris and bye.